we look at patients who have migraine attacks and are using acute treatment, we know clinically that often patients will take a second dose of medication, especially if they felt that they're starting to feel better, but they don't quite have the effect that they're hoping for, they tend to redose. So we really wanted to know if you took a second dose of drug, was it effective? Was it safe? Was it well tolerated? And if it was effective, what were the time points we were looking at? Was there two hour pain freedom or were we just feeling a little bit better? And we were hoping that this would really help lead to answer these questions so we can make clinical recommendations when we're seeing patients in practice. That yes, if you take a second dose, you're gonna feel better or don't bother taking a second dose because it doesn't really do very much. So important things that we have here now is that proving a second dose is effective, proving that not only is it effective, but if you take it and you already had some pain relief, you have a better chance of reaching pain freedom. So I think clinically that's really important to patients. Second part of that is that patients tolerated the second dose really well with the side effect and adverse event profile being similar to taking just a single dose. And I think for patients, that's probably one of the more important features. If I go ahead and take another dose, I'm gonna be fine, I'm gonna feel fine, I'm gonna feel the same. And in fact, clinically, this is what we've been hearing with patients who are using Ubrojapan. They don't even realize they took anything, they're having minimal side effects. And for our patients that took a second dose, they're saying the same thing. They don't feel drugged or over sedated or even that they've taken any medicine, they just start to notice they're feeling better. So I think that's really important for us to have that safety information and then back that up by what we're seeing clinically. I do think it was surprising we saw an effect. We're very used to thinking that if a single dose of a medication doesn't work, you have to move to a different class. That's what we see with the triptans. And when we look at the other medications that are new in this category, lasmitidan as a ditan and remigipant as a gpant, neither of them had second dose options. Neither of them showed the second dose was effective. So this was actually very surprising for you, Brojapan. Another surprising and really amazing information is that side effect profile. Again, we think as you get higher on a dose, you're going to experience more side effects, and so that might limit the all at once higher amount dosing, but we didn't see that here. And so again, two really important pieces of information that I don't think we were expecting to see. And so this abstract in particular did a pooled analysis of both Achieve 1 and Achieve 2. So it looked at various doses. We have the most patients for the 50 milligram dose based on the fact that 50 milligrams was studied in Achieve 1 and Achieve 2. And so in this particular abstract, the 50 milligram dose is what showed statistical significance for the second dose. But I think what you're asking is a fantastic question. It's often what we're thinking about in clinic. If I give my patient a starting dose of 50 milligrams and they repeat the dose in two hours and they feel better, what do I do clinically? So often these are the patients and I will say, hey, you know what, why don't we bump you up to 100 milligrams and see if that makes a difference and then how often do you need to take a second 100 milligram dose? I do think that would be wonderful if we had more data to study that. Unfortunately, since 100 milligrams was only studied in Achieve 1, there's not enough pool data to really say if a second dose of 100 milligrams is statistically significant. And what I think we're going to end up without even doing a clinical trial is a lot more information in the next year about this. If you switch them to the 100 milligram tablet, are they repeating as often? Do they need to repeat as often? Or is this a good indicator that the split dosing works better than just taking a lump dose of 100 milligrams all at once? So the takeaway I would say from this data is that a second dose of Ubrojapan is effective for patients, especially looking at the 50 milligram dose, that there's a higher chance of achieving pain freedom with the second dose than a single dose alone, especially if your patient was already having pain relief, that the second dose is well tolerated. And so consider this in your patients that tend to want to repeat dosing. This is something that I bring up with my patients when we're trying to make a choice of acute medication. How do I choose between these three great new options for patients? Well, I tell them two of them are single dose options, one is a repeat dose option, and it is amazing to see how often patients have a preference. Do they want a one dose and they're finished, or do they want the option of a second dose? And I would say it's a lot more popular for patients to want to be able to take a second dose if they need to, if they think the effect isn't enough or not fast enough, or they feel like, yeah, well, sometimes I feel better, but it still comes back in the same day based on my experience in the past. So I really like that safety option for myself. So I think that's really important in how we present this to our patients. I think that's a great takeaway message.